All right, you guys, we want to go ahead and get started if we could. Call to order. That you want to go park. All right, so everyone, go ahead and have a seat, or if you want to grab something to eat, that's fine as well. And we'll go ahead and get started. Hey, camera, go ahead and have a seat so we can start. They're still No, not yet. Um, thank you. All right, so everyone, welcome to our meeting for the uh, Latino Caucus, the Democratic Party of Oregon. So thank you so much for taking your time out to come here, because we know how busy everyone is. So thank you so much for being here. And we just want to open up right now. Because of the traffic, we're probably going to be moving the schedule around just a little bit. Um, we do have Jessica here, but what we want to do first is let's open up. We have a couple of our school board members that are running here that would like to address us, um, basically just to show that as far as Latinos go and other, um, other minority groups, we really need to start to get engaged, start to look for positions that are open, and start to run for those. So that's why we have them here right now to speak, and they're going to tell you a little bit about how they got involved, why they got involved, and the areas that they're running in. So first, let's have Jaime Rodriguez. I always go last because I didn't touch the norm. Thank you, Jaime. So hello everybody, uh, I'm Jaime Rodriguez, mucho gusto. Is that loud enough? I will try to do this. Is it loud enough? Let's, let's, let's Hola, ¿cómo están todos? Hola, Jaime. Jaime, eat the mic. Hold that. Hello, how's, how's everybody doing? There we go. Okay. okay, Jaime Rodriguez again, thank you all for coming back. Uh, I am a candidate for the Hillsborough School Board. Um, I filed on February 14th as a present to my wife. Oh. You know, uh, to me, uh, dates are symbolic. Um, also on February 14th, it, uh, seven years that I had a major surgery in my, my, inside my brain, and that I was recuperating for five weeks. So one of the things that came, came to me was that at about 42 years old, what have I done with my life? And I hadn't done anything outside of maybe trying to raise a family. Uh, so it came to me that, you know what, I, I'm a major. I majored in, in political science and public administration for federal state with the aspirations of one day running for public office. So uh, as I sat there in the hospital bed, I realized, you know what, uh, this is a wake-up call to, to make sure I, I do back the things that I did when I graduated from college. So, but I've always been involved with trying to help people, trying to support people in their dreams and opportunities. Uh, being on the school board is um, something that's going to mesh well with my personal goals. Um, I work for Portland Community College for about 14 years. I do um, job seeker training and give uh, students opportunities in uh, workforce training, and that's where my my must of why I want to go into the school board because presently the Hillsborough School Board does not have a someone from higher education or the workforce uh, environment. So I hope to add that uh, skill set to the board. Um, I have two opponents. Um, I do expect to win, and I do expect to win big because that's the only way to win. I want to make a statement on July 1st that there's a new guy in town and there's new leadership, and I'm going to do the best I can to represent the students and residents and voters of, of Hillsboro. Um, I can go on forever, but I think there's like four or five of us here. So anyway, Jaime Rodriguez, um, I've got a big uh, fundraiser on Friday night. You guys are all welcome. You guys know the Aloha, it's going to be at the spot. Uh, also, I'm going to be canvassing on Saturday. Uh, and I invite everybody who wants to just uh, have a great cultural event, uh, you know, festival in Hillsboro. It attracts about 3,000 people. It's about five hours from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Come on out and enjoy yourself. Thank you again, Jaime Rodriguez. 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. What day? Sunday. Thank you. April 21st. And where? Downtown Hillsboro. Your house? Oh, <laughs> afterwards. <laughs> afterwards. My house has a party on the weekend, most likely. <laughs> uh, we can't miss on Friday sometimes. We will have miss on Saturdays. And 
We're going to canvas every Saturday up until May 21st. All right, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Jessica, if you're here, can you raise your hand in case that everyone doesn't know who you are? Thank you. So that's great. Thanks for being here. We also um, have the Beaverton candidate, um, Huma Pierce. Am I brought to you? We have Donna Tyner as well. Hey, Donna. And Eric, Flor Eric Flores. Where is he? He's Probably he's on his way. He's stuck in traffic. And Diego Hernandez as well for uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, Diego. Diego, do you want to come up, up and yeah. talk a little bit about yourself? Thank you. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Hello. How's everybody doing? Good. Uh, my name is Diego <laughs> Hernandez, and I'm running for the Reynolds School Board. Um, I'm 25 years old. I just graduated from Portland State, so it's great to be Um I got my master's in social work here, so it's it's an amazing school. Um, so let me a little bit about myself. I grew up on the east side of Multnomah County, and I actually went to Reynolds. Um, I went to Reynolds Middle School, um, H. Billy Middle School, and Reynolds High School. And so I knew there was a lot of issues. Um, um, we called it a segregated hall in my school where all the Latinos hanged out, um, and we were a growing population. And um, I started really paying attention to uh, segregation, at least in my school, and the stories of racism that existed. So in my mind, that's what stuck to me when I went off to the University of Oregon to get my political science degree. Um, first generation student, um, and I also got a degree in ethnic studies. Uh, and I joined, <laughs> I joined this political stuff by organizing um, our uh, ethnic studies program to a department. So we ran some campaigns to, to make sure that um, our professors were tenured and they could say, call out people for being racist and not get fired for it. <laughs> so that's how I kind of started my political stuff. Um, I was on the United States Student Association board. And because of my involvement for four years on the board, um, I got uh, to know a lot of the folks on... Democracy for America, hence I got endorsed by them. Uh, so that was cool. So it pays off when you're involved. Um, what else can I say? So uh, the east side, you know, there's a lot of communities of color, <laughs> right? Um, I started organizing parents two years ago, and that's how I started. Um, Latino parents, and, um, my first meeting was at Reynolds Middle School. We had over 200 Latino parents, because that's how eager they wanted to have their voice heard. And I'm a community organizer, and that's how I started. So I'm continuing to do so. Um, so I, I wanted to learn more about what the issues that um, they identified were. Uh, so I continue to do so. And actually, since September, I've organized every elementary school, uh, Latino PTA, and also the middle school. Um, right now, we're working on the high school, but Stanford Children's there, so we're competing a little. Um, but I'm sure we will work together. So, um, so that's what I do. I like to organize. Um, I'm a political junkie. I like to <laughs> read the news. I got every political app on my phone. <laughs> Andrea knows. Um, and so yeah, that's me. I have a Facebook. Um, oh, guess what? I don't have an opponent. Uh, oh, yeah. So I, I came in to the board meetings, and I've been on the board meetings, uh, or listening to the board meetings for almost a year. And I went in there, and I applied for the finance committee, and got in, and been involved. And I told them I'm the new kid on the block, and there's going to be some changes, uh, and some new voices heard. And that's what I'm going to do. All right, thank you so much. All right, thank you so much. So next up, we're going to have Jessica Peterson. Uh, she's going to talk a little bit about um, engaging people in why we should start to get involved, people who want to run for different positions. 
uh, what makes them decide to do so, how do you get started, and hopefully, um, as well with our caucus, we'll be introducing positions that will be coming open as well in the future. Thanks, Jules. So, uh, thanks so much for having me here tonight. So, I'm Jessica Vega Peterson. I'm a state representative. Woo! Yeah, you are. <laughs> <laughs> East Portland, actually. So, uh, yeah, so go east side. Uh, Diego is actually one of my constituents. And I'm happy. So, I'm going to just talk a little bit about. Yeah, okay. Um, and Eric, who is going to be here later, is also one of my constituents. So, I love that. Um, I just want to talk a little bit about how I got involved in this and how I was able to run for office. And then um, talk a little bit about uh, some of the fears that you might have in running for it and what I think do to help get over those fears. So uh, I started out just moving to East Portland about eight years ago. My, my husband and I were looking to buy our first home and we found a great place in East Portland. We love it. It's right next door to the David Douglas football field. And I have two kids. I have a two and a half year old and a five year old. Um, and I got involved right away in my neighborhood association um, just so I could kind of know what's going on in the community, what's happening there, which I really recommend as one way to get involved. Uh, but I also became a Democratic precinct committee person right away when I moved there. Uh, anybody else here? Who else is PCPs? I am. Okay, good. Yes, I recommend all, all, everybody should be a PCP. Um, well, I know the people that's involved in the Democratic Party. So. <laughs> that's what I know. Yeah. So, but I think that's a great way, especially if you're not sure exactly how to start getting involved on a regular basis. Coming to meetings like this is great, but being a PCP is a a way for you to get that connection in your community, which I think is important if you're going to be running for any kind of office. Um, so those are two things. And it doesn't, I mean, you know, those are the, the things that I did, but it could be, you know, on your parks board, or it could be um, in the PTA if you've got kids in school. I mean, there are a lot, or a chamber of commerce if you own a business. I mean, there are a lot of different ways, but just look for those avenues and see what's going to fit best with your life and your interest to get involved in those and just take that stuff and do it. Um, that's the easiest way to do that. The second thing that I would recommend is finding um, uh, something a little bit more formal as far as um, the position that you're interested in and how you actually make that happen. For me, um, you know, I told you I had two kids, so I was a PCP from, from early on, and Eric's a PCP with me in District 47, um, and I heard about this pro program that they were starting for uh, Democratic women in Oregon. <laughs> <laughs> and that was in, I think, 2008, and I wanted to go, but I think I was, I was, you know, five months pregnant with my first kid, and I just knew that that wasn't going to work for me. So then it happened the next year, and I had a newborn, and the year after that, I was pregnant with my second one. So finally, I was ready to do a merge, and so I did it. Uh, I, I signed up, and I got applied for a merge, and I got in, but at the same time, the, the position opened up in my, um, the state rep seat opened up in my district, so I, instead of, I thought I was going to have this great plan, I thought I was going to go through a merge and learn everything I needed to do and kind of lay the foundation, and that doesn't happen, because um, when the best position opens up for you, you got to, you have to be ready to jump into it, whether it's school board or, or state rep or whatever it is, you've got to be ready to go, and that's why I think it's important to be making the connections now and talking to the people that you want now. So anyway, I went through immersion. It was great. It was great for the stuff that I learned, but it was also great for the amazing women that I met in that um, in that school um, who went through emerge. Homa, who else? Shelly. I mean, so there's there's already like a great a great sisterhood up there, and that's exactly what we call each other's emerge sisters. Um, so that's something I'd recommend definitely for women. And I know there's a labor candidate school that Eric and Jaime and I don't know who else here might have gone through too. So a lot of different ways out there of getting uh, getting started with that. Um, but also another way, if you don't want to go some, through something that formal or you just want to find out, is just talking to somebody who has the office that you want to have. When I was first getting in, uh, started with this, I was so amazed and really thankful about how open people were to sitting down and talking to me about what I wanted to do. And I think that, you know, it's a big fear in asking, oh my God, they're an elected official, you know, they got to be so busy and why would they? But people were amazing about that. Um, and really, I don't think I would have actually run for office if I hadn't had a conversation with Kate Brown. And I was like, you know, I just don't know if I'm qualified. I, you know, the seat is, I was just like, she's like, listen, she's like, Men wake up every day and decide that they want to run for office, and they don't worry about right? it. <laughs> so, and I was just like, oh, that's right. And I'm like, oh, I have, you know, 
you, I have qualifications. You know, I'm a business owner and a mother, and I've been involved in my community. So, you know, it's important to be able to kind of understand what you, what strengths you have, and just and just act on that. So, um, again, I would say just reach out to people about, um, especially those people who have the position that you think you want to have, or a position that you want to find out more about. I mean, I think if you're really interested in social services and health issues and a county commissioner, especially a Multnomah County commissioner, might be a good avenue for you to do. So please consider a Washington County commissioner position. Yeah. Anyone? Everyone? Yeah, I know that's <laughs> Just asking out loud. Yeah. So those, those are the recommendations that I would have. Um, and I love what I'm doing now. I mean, it's so, it's busy and I drive two hours a day. I see Sabrina, my chief of staff, who, I'll give a shout out to her because I wouldn't be able to do what I do. Um, but it's tough, but it's, I'm working on the issues that I, you know, that are really important to Oregon, the things that I'm so passionate about, like education, you know, like uh, what we're doing with public safety in this state, you know, what we're doing with our, our taxes and our revenue. That's, I sit on the revenue committee and it's like, how are we going to pay for all of these things and how are we going to make sure that people who can afford to pay the most are, are paying their fair share when they're also asking, we're, we're also talking about cutting purrs and things like that. So let's make sure that it's, um, it's equal. So. Um, so I would, you know, it's, it's a lot of fun and I think you really can make a big difference. Um, the other thing I would say is like an organization like this is just a great way to, to, you know, meet people who are interested in the same thing and use those people. Like if you're running for office and you need to be people to come out and canvas, like ask everybody in here because the thing is Eric came out and canvassed for me and Diego came out and canvassed for me and I will canvass for them, you know, I mean like that's, and then you kind of pay it around. So. Um, and I'm just so excited. I think this is an amazing time um, this year for the Latino community in Oregon. I think that we have a real opportunity with um, 2014 to a register voters and then turn and then get the vote turned out for um, to really show the impact that Latinos can make. And so that's something that's a priority for me in the next two years. And I and I'm happy to work with you guys on that. Thank you for joining. Yeah. 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 I'm going to open up the floor for questions for Jessica for just a couple minutes, so if anybody has any questions. How do you see the driver's license? Yeah, 833. Yeah, 833. So that is, you know, this is one of my highest priority um, issues right now. So it came, it just got passed out of the Senate Business and Transportation Committee with a 4-2 vote, which is really good. I, from what I've heard, it's got a, a good path out of the Senate. And, um, and, and, it, and I know that people in the Democratic caucus almost entirely are supportive of it, so I think it's got a really great chance in the House, too. Um, we just gotta make sure, I mean, there's always like the last minute tweaks and, and, and you know how it goes if somebody has a priority bill that they wanna hold this hostage for a PERS or a revenue thing. So you, we don't know, but it's looking really good and we've got people down there who are working their asses off trying to get this yeah, thing passed. So, so I mean, I think it looks good, but Fingers crossed. You know, no. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I think it, I think we I think we have a path where we could do it. So do you have any idea for around when what time they'll be voting on it? Um so in Senate I think we should probably see it um I think it's gonna go through the Ways and Means sub and then full Ways and Means next week is kind of the I think the thing. And then the week after that, um, voting on the Senate and then probably either later that week or the week after the House. That's what yeah, three, three to four weeks, and that's uh, and that's you know I think if everything kind of goes as planned, so it could be soon. Yeah, it's really that's just really exciting. Thank yeah. you very much. Sure. Any other questions? What's your biggest surprise as a freshman? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good question. Yeah, that is a good question. How busy, how busy your day is in that like, it's just you're just back and forth like like today I have you know. I had a 7:45 meeting, and then I had a um, revenues. My revenues from 8 to 10, then I have caucus from 10 to 11, then I have floor from 11 to 12:15, and then I have lunch, and then I have committee. You know, it's so it's like boom, 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 boom. And even on the days I don't have committee, it's 15-minute meetings with all sorts. So it's like the pace of it is really intense. If you don't like that pace, you're going to just it's just going to wipe you out. I love it. Like I, I like I really like it, and it makes me excited. But but some people need kind of like a slower pace or, or you know they just have different ways of coping with that so um, but I don't know you can ask Marina sometimes I like walk in to my office at 4 45 on a Tuesday or Thursday and like I'll just be followed in by Marina and Rachel and I'm like what do you guys think they're like we just need FaceTime because we haven't seen you all day so that's it yeah 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 y
Thank you, guys. Okay, so thank you so much, Jessica, for being here, taking out your time as well. We'd also like to thank you to uh, say thank you to Carrie and the Women's Resource Center for allowing us to, to have the space for the evening. Next up, uh, we're going to have uh, Donna, and she's from the Beaverton District. Donna! Good evening, everyone. My name is Donna Tyner, and I'm running for Beaverton School Board Zone 4. That um, feeds into Aloha, so all the, all the elementary and middle schools that feed into Aloha is the district that I would be representing. I have been living in Beaverton since 1983. I actually attended Willamette University. I attended Willamette University and married John Tyner in '84, who happens to be a Washington County guy. So of course we settled there. Um, we raised our two children there, Michael and Thomas, and they of course went through the Beaverton schools. So I have been a very active parent and very active in the com com community, volunteering in the classroom, doing whatever I can to help out. In fact, about three years ago, I was concerned about the disciplinary handbook that the school district had, so I actually contacted Paul Vegas, who was the person in charge of putting together that handbook, and offered her some suggestions on how she might improve it so it would be more of a resource for her parents. Um, she liked all of my ideas, and in fact, she asked me to come and serve and sit on the committee to help revise it. So that's kind of been my passion for the past three years. I think we made a lot of inroads in making it more of a resource guide. So I feel like now I really under, under, understand how to work within the system. I know who to talk to, and I wanted to sort of elevate my influence over the school district by running as a board member. So that's one of the reasons why I'm running. Um, I have a political science degree, as I said, from Willamette University. Um, and I currently work for the Port of Portland as a risk analyst. So thank you very much for inviting me this evening. It's a pleasure to be before you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Also now we have Eric Flores. And Eric is from uh, is running for our school board. He's a candidate in Portland. <laughs> I, I like to apologize. Uh, I'm uh, losing my voice, uh, but I I thought I would make it here. So my name is Eric Flores, and I live in Portland, and um, I live in the Park Rose School District, and I am running for position five. Um, I believe in the stronger schools. I believe our schools need to be supported. Uh, our schools and teachers uh, need to make sure that they have a good contract so that they can make uh, the decision to stay. And at the same time, we can retain the best and the brightest minds uh, in our community. My district is pretty much split among five different groups. We have about 25% Latinos, 20% uh, Asian Americans. We have a 10% um, African American. We also have uh, about 25% which is native Caucasian, and then on top of that we have about probably 5 to 9% Russian Ukrainian. Uh, we have about 57 or more languages uh, at any given time. Uh, we have 74, 70, 70% 70 free and reduced lunch, and um, the current board for the past 20, 50 years uh, uh, hasn't been involved in the communities, uh, the minority communities at all. And uh, my election uh, on May, of, May 21st will be, I will be the first um, candidate of Latino descent to be representing uh, the population of Acros. Uh, at the same time, I'm running against two opponents, uh, which they don't call themselves Republicans because we have a democratic plurality. So by all means, they call themselves uh, independents. But we know who they are. And I'm outing them. I'm letting everybody know I am the democratic choice. Um, I stand for the values of education. I myself am a public school teacher, and I believe that our students, uh, given the right proper tools, they can be successful just like anyone else. And this is not a story. Uh, this has been proven over time. Many waves of immigrants have come to the United States from different parts of the world. Um, it happens to be the same critical time, but at this point, we need everybody's involvement. We need to make coalitions. We need to reach out to all the communities, not just our own, but also to the African-American community, 
to the Asian American community, to the Somali community, to all communities, because as a block, we all together, we can make a change. And uh, so I'm asking my community to act for the vote so that I can represent them, and that way we can create better and greater places for uh, all of us in the public school district. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, so we are, yep, somebody's ready and raring to go. <laughs> so uh, introducing Huma Pierce, she is running in our Beaverton district. Yay! Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, uh, so my name is Dr. Huma Pierce, oh, and I have a very serious admission. I wish I was Hispanic, <laughs> but I'm not. I'm Pakistani. I am so sorry to disappoint you, but I promise that I will make it up to you. <laughs> Ready? So I'm running for Beaverton School District. Beaverton School District. The, the district that you want to move to. Remember? The one that you thought that was so amazing that you would take your kids to because you knew that they would get a good quality education. Those days are over. I'm sorry to tell you, but I'll make it better. If you give me the chance and elect me as your next school board member, I will be the person to help you reduce the class sizes that are coming to 60 in a calculus class. For those of you who even thought that calculus was hard, imagine if there were 60 kids in your class. 40 kids in a middle school class. Can you imagine that? I can't imagine that. That's not the education that I had. It's not the education that you had. It's not the education we want for our kids. Even if you don't have children, can you imagine being old and gray and having someone read to you that can't properly read? <laughs> Honestly, think about that. So I'm running because the opportunities I had in my life, the opportunities that you had in your life, the fact that we're here at a university, those opportunities need to be had for our Latina children, our Latino children, our Pakistani children, <laughs> our American children. Because we're all Americans, we all deserve the education that you had, that I had, that we all deserve. Is this true? Yes. yes. I didn't hear you. <laughs> yes, this is the education that I will fight for. This is the education that we all want. We all moved to Beaverton because Beaverton was that relaxed, safe, most educated place where you would get a job. Those days are very dicey right now, friends. And I want you to consider the fact that I understand that if you don't get a good education, you don't have the opportunities that you need at an elementary middle and high school level, 77% of the children in high school graduate. Is that fair? No. It's not fair at all. We should have a 99% graduation rate. The only way to get that is to A, look at the funding. B, make the funding happen. C, take care of all of our children. All of our children, which means your children and my little boy too. So I'm going to fight for you. I'll stand up to the committee, the committee, the Senate Committee on Education. I'll stand up to the Senate Committee in the House. I'll stand up to the governor. You know why? Because I value education as much as you do, if not more. Because I believe in the next generation. The generation's going to read to me. I love medical literature. What will I do if somebody can't read that to me? Really? Think about your future, because your future depends on our future and the future of children today. Would you be so kind as to tell all your friends in Beaverton and in the Beaverton School District, which includes, yes, the West Hills, yes, Portland, please consider telling them that Dr. Homa Pierce, P-I-E-R-C-E, -E, is running for Beaverton School Board Zone Number 7, and she would love to have your voice. Yes, sir, what would you like to say? Thank you. <laughs> so let's give a hand to all of the candidates for our school boards, and make sure you keep them in mind when elections come up in May. Um, I think a couple people had
had made some announcements about needing um, people to canvas. So uh, when we finish, if you guys could get in connection with them, that'd be great. So um, I'd like to welcome the Latino Network here to talk about some of the programs that they, that they have to offer. I am the director for our leadership uh, civic engagement and education programs uh, for Latino Network. We are here as, uh, by invitation. We're a nonpartisan uh, nonprofit and we offer different services, but I understand you guys want to learn about our ways to get involved in our leadership programs. So Latino Network is a culture-specific um, service organization, and our, we have two um, leadership development programs. One of them is our Leaders Academy, and I see some of our current participants as well as our alumni here. Um, our Leaders Academy really is um, set up to prepare our community to participate and engage civically. Um, so that their voices can really impact and diversify, to really diversify the voice that's impacting policy. Um, so we prepare our participants. They start um, at the very beginning learning about our government structure and how they can participate uh, serving on committees, um, you know, the whole range. So that's one of our programs. The other program that we have is called Unidos for Oregon, and that program was put together after a thorough community scan to see what our community uh, needed so that we could add to the wonderful leadership programs that already exist in our community. Unidos for Oregon is um, specifically designed to bring our communities together across um, sectors across um, differences to really be able to collaborate and pull our um, civic force together. So that's that's um, our Unidos for Oregon program. Thank you. Okay, and so now what we want to do, we want to go ahead and open it up to anybody who might have anything they want to say in regards to any events coming up, anything in regards to uh, future events or current events, anything? Would you like to? Okay. See? Well, uh, I'd like to invite you, all of you, uh, I'm doing my walks on Fridays and Saturdays. And um, we live in Portland, um, or 122nd and Halsey. So if you happen to live in that area, or you happen to be close by, you're more than welcome to join us. You don't need an invitation, you just show up. We'll get you some coffee, we'll get you some cafe literature, we'll give you a map. And, um, and then you can help us making the change out there uh, in the Pagros area. Uh, we need lots of volunteers, uh, we need lots of people who have good health or who want to get a workout for the morning. Um, I'm more than willing to give you a space, give you an opportunity to, to be the change for that weekend. So uh, you can find me on Facebook at Eric Flores for Position 5. Yeah, Eric Flores for Pagos Position 5. And uh, I'm also going to be here uh, in the area. If you have more questions, I'm going to leave my, some of my stickers so you can take them home. And uh, if you want some of my campaign literature as well, and you want to show off that you uh, got to be the <laughs> candidate, I'm going to leave it over here on the table so you can more than you more than welcome to come get it. Thank you. Thank you so much. And now we have we have one more person that's going to uh, give some information as well. Thank you. Thank you, Jules. Hi, I'm Joanne Hardesty, and I want to thank Jules for inviting me to be here tonight. And I've got a couple of announcements that I think you may be interested in. Um, on Thursday, the 18th, uh, will be a screening of a, a documentary called Broken on All Sides, Race, Mass Incarceration, and a New Vision for Criminal Justice in the United States. 
it's been hosted by uh, Portland Teachers Association, and there will be a discussion afterwards. Um, in way of a little background, I've spent the last decade in this community working on police accountability issues. Uh, you may be surprised to know that if you're African American, you're three times more likely to be stopped and searched by Portland police. If you're Latino, you're twice as likely to be stopped and searched by Portland police. If you happen to be stopped and happen to be searched and happen to be white, you are much more likely to have drugs, guns, and other paraphernalia <laughs> on you. Uh, but the community that we live in uh, seems to focus on uh, really harassing African American and Latino youth in our community. Um, and the last thing I want to share is there's going to be a documentary that's going to have an opening reception on May 18th. Uh, and the documentary filmmakers is an organization called Safe and Sound. It's a group of females who are videographers uh, and activists in our community. They got a grant from Regional Arts and Culture Council to do a documentary on police violence in the city of Portland. They talked to uh, f surviving family members of uh, Keith Notice, uh, who was killed uh, three years ago, actually, uh, this year. Uh, they talked to the mother of Kendra James, who was killed 10 years ago this year by Portland police. They talked to the parents of uh, 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 James Chassie, who, of course, uh, there was a recent uh, movie about them. But the film is a, uh, uh, the documentary really kind of highlights the stories because unfortunately, <laughs> when all community members are killed at the hands of the police, we don't hear the side of who they were. You know, we hear where the police went to school, why they wanted to be police officers, but we don't have an opportunity to talk about the lost dreams, the lost potential of the people that have been, whose lives have been cut short by actions of people who are sworn to protect and serve. So on May 18th, starting at 5 p.m., downtown at Pioneer Square, uh, in the Galleria on the third floor will be the screening and the opening reception. That space will have pictures up for over a month that actually will be pictures that were taken from this documentary. Uh, I encourage you, if you have the opportunity, to please come and participate, come see it. Please tell other people about it. It's really important as a community that we collectively decide the kind of police departments we want and I don't think any of us want the ones that we have now. Uh, and so the goal is to have one that will protect and serve all of us, regardless of our skin color, our social economic condition, or what part of town we happen to live in. So thank you very much for listening. I will pass these cards out, and please share the word. Thank you. Buenas noches, um, my name is Pam Campos. Um, I'm an Air Force member um, and I lead a Latinas empowerment group here at PSU, Las Mujeres de la Raza. And I just wanted to kind of put it out there, May 24th, we're gonna have a Latina luncheon here at PSU. Um, it's really meant to be, it's an annual event. Um, if you came to our um, Latin night event, it's a very similar thing, but very um, a lot smaller. Um, and it's really a community event and it's really to, um, Engage the community and really a networking event for Latinas. If you're interested in Latina leadership, we're going to have, we're going to be recognizing a lot of the grassroots organizers, a lot of the women in Portland and in the Portland um, surrounding areas that are really doing a lot of the grassroots work. I was recently, this last um, weekend, I was part of the Voto Latino uh, campaign and we're going to kind of bring a lot of that information and that knowledge um, at the Latina luncheon. So May 24th, a lot of information is going to be put out in the next few weeks. Um, so if you look at the um, Last Mujeres page, it's facebook.com, Mujeres PSU. Um, you can find out more information about it. Thank you. Um, I just received a notice this week from Aloha High School that one of the Aloha High School students that graduated, I think 2006, actually put a film together about the lack of fathers in the black community. It's called Black Fatherhood. So if anyone's interested in coming, it'll be at Aloha High School on Thursday night. He's actually going to be there. 
the um, person who, who put the film together and talk about his own life experiences. And um, there's also going to be an opportunity for discussion. So you're more than welcome to attend. It's open to the pu public and it's free. <coughs> <laughs> Hello, this is Dr. Homa Pierce again. Hopefully you get a card that will remind you that that's my website. And I want to show you a little piece about it. When you click on the word volunteer, it helps you get to this lovely page that you can put your name, your address, and whatever you want to share with me. The important part is that part. I endorse Homa Pierce, please use my name which is the most important part because they genuinely care about how you feel about this campaign. So why don't you go to this website when you have the chance, peruse it, if it makes you happy, or if it makes you, if it pisses you off, and <laughs> makes you mad, can you tell me why? And I'll make it better for you. Because I genuinely care about how it means, what it means to you. So this is how you can actually help me in my campaign. You can put a yard sign up, you could like, do some social media, Cameron, and you could actually make things happen. Thank you, Dr. Homa Pierce, and thank you so much for having me here. <coughs> I'm running for Beaverton School Board, zone number seven. But guess what? Everybody in Beaverton, the entirety of Beaverton and the West Hills can vote for both Donna and myself. Everybody can vote for everybody. The zone thing, not so much. Don't worry about it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I'm just going to speak in just a minute, but I think they're going to put his page up. So, in the meantime, um, for the uh, Democratic Party of Oregon, there's going to be a event called Making a Difference in Oregon. Um, that's going to be the uh, Dick Celesi Awards Dinner for Celsi. Multnomah, or Celsi, thank you, uh, for the Multnomah County Dems, which is on Friday, May 17th. And that is at Riverside Country Club. We'll also be having our state central committee meeting May 18th and 19th. That's going to be in Lincoln City. So you want to write that down if you guys can make it. Um, we, are, we will also be having our uh, Democratic Party of Oregon, uh, Oregon Summit, which will be October 4th through the 6th in Sun River. Um, so that's going to be a little bit far off, so you'll probably hear some more information about that as the information comes in. Are you ready, Hannah? Yeah. So I'll make this kind of kind of quick, but I do like to talk a lot. Um, I was shy as a boy. Uh, I got educated at Fresno State University, and I actually went to PSU here for a fellowship about 10 years ago. There was a people of color uh, fellowship, and I met some great, wonderful people, uh, coming who are now serving leadership here in Washington County. I mean, Monona County. My apologies. Um, congratulations to all of the board members who are also running. I think there is going to be a, a new leadership that starts at the board meetings. And I can see us um, bringing that new leadership now and then moving on to, to higher state offices in about 10 years, but we're growing a movement here. And it's going to be an uh, organization like the DPO. It's going to be a, a, a community of color, uh, Latinos, Pakistanians, where they at? Okay. <laughs> uh, and everybody, because as you know, the country is coming to a place where it's, it's, it's starting to make a, a turn or a, a, uh, a switch as far as the, the popular of what is right. As you guys may know right now, um, I'm big on statistics, so Presently right now, 50% of all college students are female. A little over 50% of all workers are female. So I believe that in my lifetime, I am going to see a female president. Yay! That's just going to happen. That's just going to happen because it's going to happen. And you know, and my, my thing is also that it may even be a person of color who does that uh, leadership. Uh, however, I always want to get to my Facebook page. We are canvassing every weekend. Um, I can't see behind me, but there should be a post there. Uh, we're having a big uh, birthday bash on, they told me not to call it a birthday bash, a birthday fundraiser on Friday night. Uh, I do have two opponents, uh, and I am constantly- One and two. <laughs> uh, I'm, I've, I've been a leader with the Washington County Democrats for some time now. I'm a past chair of the Latino Outreach Committee, uh, and we did some good things there. Uh, in between 2010 and 2012, we registered over 300 uh, voters in Washington County alone. alone. So that, that put me up to a position where I want to do more. That's why I'm running for board. But I got my um, little walk piece. I'm going to hand them out. 
Uh, me and Uma gotta leave here because we wanna get make it to a educational town hall down at uh, Beaverton Library. So again, uh, to all the other candidates on the board, I, I wish you luck. I do expect you guys all to win because we have great support among each other. And again, thank you, Jaime Rodriguez. Okay, we're now closing the meeting, and we thank you guys so much for coming here, for taking the time out. We do have uh, refreshments and stuff still, so please stay around, um, maybe meet with some other people and talk, and uh, we'll let you know when our next meeting will be coming up. Thank you very much.